Hey, you've reached the final project. And as you've seen at the beginning of today's uh, lessons, I showed you what we're going to be making, which is a sort of choose your own adventure game. I don't know if you've ever read those choose your own adventure books where you flip to a different page if um, you make a particular choice and then the story kind of evolves as you make your choices. Now, we're going to make a very simple version of that using what we've learned about conditionals, if, else, elif statements, as well as everything we've done previously. So you've already seen what the final outcome should look like. And if you want to review it again, just head over to treasure-island-end.atbury.repl.run. And here you'll see essentially the game in action. So it start off asking you, you're at a crossroad. Do you want to go left or right? And then you have to type your choice. If you selected left, then it's going to take you to a lake um, and it asks you whether if you want to wait for a boat or swim across. So let's go ahead and wait for a boat. And then the final step is it asks you which door would you like to go through, red, yellow or blue. Now, depending on your choice, you'll either end up with game over or you'll end up with um, winning the game. So the basic setup for this game looks something like this. And I've included a link to this flowchart in the starting REPL. So REPL it slash Abbery slash Treasure Island start. And of course, you'll find all the links in the course resources as always. But if you scroll down, there's a link right here that takes you to this flowchart. Now, the first question you're going to ask the user is to make a choice between left and right. Now, you can use my wording um, if you want. You're at a crossroad. Where do you want to go? Type left or type right. But I think the fun part of this challenge is really creating your own story, right? but somehow get them to choose between left and right. If they choose right or any other condition for that matter, tell them that they've lost game over for some sort of reason. In my case, if they had chosen right, the reason is because they fell into a hole game over. But I think you're far more imaginative than I am. So go ahead and use all of those skills and make your game really fun. Now, if they've chosen left on the other hand, then we're going to take them to another question that asks them whether if they want to swim or whether if they want to wait for a boat. Um, and if they swam, then it's going to be some form of game over. There's crocodiles, there's... Um, whatever it may be, but they can't continue. But if they chose wait, then we take them to the third and final question, which asks them to choose between three doors. And if they choose any door other than the yellow door, then they would lose. But if they chose the yellow door, then they somehow win. Now, notice how each of these just says game over, game over, left or right. But, you know, the idea is really to use your creativity and make this game really your own. Now, one thing to remember, though, is that when the user types in a answer, let's say left or right, they might type it like this um, with an uppercase R or they might type it like this, all lowercase. Have a think about how you might make sure that no matter which version they typed, you're still going to be able to catch their command, essentially. So have a think about what you've learned in the previous lessons and take a look at this flowchart then head over to the starting project and you can get started writing your code. Now, if you head over here and what you see is sort of like a mumbo jumbo bunch of characters, then the reason is probably because there's not enough space for this ASCII art of a treasure chest to display. So you can either do as I did, reduce the size of the console, or alternatively, and probably easier, is to change the layout to stacked, make it go at the bottom, collapse this left hand pane, and then you've got as much space as you have um, to work with. Now, ASCII art is really cool because it basically just uses a bunch of characters that you know and love, like the comma and the equal sign and all of these things that um, together make up a picture. And you can find your own ASCII art if you just go to ascii.co.uk slash art and you'll see a whole bunch of different topics um, and they've grouped a lot of things together into individual pages. So if you wanted a rhino ASCII art, then you can find a whole bunch of rhinos that people have drawn. 
But the easiest way is, of course, using uh, Command F if you're on a Mac or Control F if you're on a Windows machine and then just search for the thing that you want. So, for example, I went and searched for treasure and down here I found this brilliant treasure box ASCII art, which is what I'm using to print inside this print statement. Now, notice how there's three single quotes that are at the start and there's three single quotes at the end. Basically, what the single quotes allow you to do is to create multiple lines of um, a string, essentially. So notice how if I go ahead and delete all of these uh, single quotes and I only had a set of double quotes, then it actually doesn't quite work. It gets quite confused um, because it thinks that this is where the line ends. But in fact, I wanted to print all of this out. So to do that, instead of using a double quote, I use three single quotes. And at the very bottom, I tell it, well, this is the end of my multi-block string by using three single quotes as well. So have a go at running that and you should be able to see that in your console you get this little Treasure Island ASCII art being printed along with the two sentences that begin the game. So have a look at the flowchart, um, have a play around with the ASCII art and also have a look at the final version of the app so that you can go ahead and create your own version to complete this challenge. Pause the video now and give that a go. All right, so let's see if we can replicate the functionality or the logic that's shown in this diagram into our Treasure Island game. So the first thing it has to do is we have to ask the user whether if they want to turn left or right. And after we ask the user this question, we're going to want to capture their input, right? So let's go ahead and create an input function and ask our question. Now, notice how when I use my double quotes around my string, the double quotes that are inside the double quotes are interpreted as code because it actually thinks that this is the end of the first string, this is the second string, and this is the final string. This is how the computer is going to see it. Now, previously, you saw that we could do the trick where we change this to single quotes instead. But if like me, you have this case where you have the your with the apostrophe, then it's going to think that this is actually the end of the first string, this is the second string, and this is the third string. So this doesn't actually really help us. Now, what we can do when we want to tell our computer that what I'm writing is actually not code, just see it as text, you can get it to ignore a symbol afterwards by using the backslash. So this way, it basically escapes this string and it will see it as text. And now we have a complete string like this. And this is just going to be interpreted as text because we told it to with the backslash. Now, of course, there's other ways that you could have gone around this. You could have just simply said you are at at a crossroad rather than using the apostrophe. But more often than not, you'll need to use a symbol that you'll need to escape and you can do that with the backslash. So that's just a quick tip. Now, at this point, the user is going to type a message left or right. So let's go ahead and save that to a variable. Let's call it choice one equals their input. Now, remember how I said they could be typing the answer as right or as right. So how can we make sure that when we're doing our checks using the if statement, we ignore the casing? Well, one way of doing this is we can simply use the lower function to change their input, no matter how they wrote it, right, right, or right, it should all be converted into lowercase to this version. That way we have one thing that we can consistently check for in our if statement, which is coming up next. So we can say if choice one is equal to, remember the double equals, is checking whether if left hand side and right hand side is equal and the single equal sign is assigning the right hand side to this particular variable name. Now if choice one equals the string right then it's pretty much game over for our player. So let's go ahead and add our colon and print something like game over. 
Of course, we can elaborate this a little bit more as to why was it game over? Well, because you fell into a hole. This is like the E.T. game from the 80s. Lots of holes. Um, so you fell into a hole, game over. Um, but what if they had chosen left instead? Well, that takes them on to the next question. So that's the option that will allow them to continue along the game. Now, in this case, we could use an else statement and say, well, if they didn't choose right, then they probably chose left, right? But they could have also chosen like a option that was completely not listed. They could have just written something like this and it would still trigger the else statement. So what we should actually do is to switch it around. So namely, we should say if choice one is equal to left, well, in that case, then they continue um, in the game. But otherwise, namely, if they chose right or anything else for that matter, then it's pretty much game over. So this format makes a lot more sense if you want to continue along the left side of the branch this way. Now, another thing that you might have realized because we learned about combining different conditions is instead of using the dot lower to change the input to lowercase, you could have also said if choice is equal to left or if choice one is equal to left spelled like this, that will both work. Um, but I think in terms of succinctness and less code writing, I think this makes a lot more sense to me. So I'm going to continue with this version. But if you did it the other way, that's perfectly valid as well. Now, if their choice one was left, then they get taken to the next question. Do you want to swim or do you want to wait? So let's go ahead and continue the game and create another input. In this input, we're going to ask them a question and say, you've come to a lake. There is an island in the middle of the lake. Type wait to wait for a boat. Type swim to swim across. Cool. So we've actually got the same problem as we had before, namely that this is being interpreted as code rather than as a continuous single string. So do you remember how we fixed this previously? And if you got stuck on this, I recommend having a go at this yourself before I show you the answer. All right, so previously we said we were going to switch it to single quotes instead so that these double quotes become interpreted as just normal strings. But of course, we've got this you've, we could of course change it to you have instead of you've. But if we want to escape the string, we just add a backslash. And now everything is colored in this sort of pinkish color to indicate it's all interpreted as a string, which is exactly what we did previously. Now, in terms of this input, they're going to type wait or they're going to type swim. So let's go ahead and lower the casing for it as well. And then we're going to save it inside a choice. We're going to say choice two. Now, be really careful and mindful of your indentation, because if you wrote it like this, then it's going to be creating some errors for you, because this choice two input line has to run when this choice one is equal to left. Otherwise, we're going to get an indentation error. So let's go ahead and indent it here to show that this part is inside this if statement and will only be executed if this is true. And then we get to check our choice two. So if choice two is equal to wait, then it means that the game will continue. But else, so if they typed swim or anything else for that matter, then the game is going to end. So we're going to print and tell them that something terrible happened. You got attacked by an angry trout. Game over. Now we can continue along this path. So we're down to here now. And the final question we're going to ask the user is which door do they want to choose? 
So here I'm going to use an input to send them the message that you arrive at the island unharmed. There is a house with three doors, one red, one yellow, one blue. Which color do you choose? Now I'm going to save their choice inside a variable called choice three, lowercase the um, answer that they provided. And finally, I'm going to use if elephant else to check which one they chose. So if choice three is equal to red, elif choice three is equal to yellow, elif choice three is equal to blue. And then I've got a else. So here are four possible things that could happen. If they chose red, then I'm gonna tell them that it's game over, but it's going to be some sort of creative version of game over. So maybe something like um, it's a room full of fire, game over. If they chose yellow on the other hand, well, that's going to be the room where the treasure exists. So I'm going to print, um, you found the treasure, you win. If they chose blue, they also um, end up with game over and I have to give them a different reason. Now, if you had decided that if they chose anything but yellow, the way that they're going to game over is the same. Say if you, know, if you chose red, it's a room full of fire, game over. If you chose blue, it's a room full of fire, game over. Anything else, it's also going to be fire, game over. Well, then you could just use if and else. But if you wanted each choice or each door to have a different outcome for the user, say the red door has fire, the blue door has beasts, and if they chose the wrong door, then they're going to get something like, you chose a door that doesn't exist, game over. So can you see that depending on whether if you want to give the user a different um, print statement um, based on their choice, then you would use if, elif, else. But if you actually just wanted to give them the same feedback, which is game over, then you could just use if and else. Now let's run our game and just make sure that it works. So I'm gonna go left because I know it continues. And then I'm going to wait for the boat. And that allows me to get to the final condition. And if I choose yellow, I know that I'll win. Now, if you want to change the formatting because having the input at the end of the sentence doesn't look as good as letting the user type it on a new line, like what we've got here, then you can simply, if you remember, just add the new line, which is backslash n at the end of your inputs, like so. So how did you get on with this challenge? And if you didn't manage to do it right, or if you've done it right, go back and try and modify it. See if you can add some more conditions or see if you can make the game over messages a little bit more interesting than what I've written. See if you can modify it and make it really your own. Have fun with that. And in the next lesson, I've got more exciting things coming up for you. So hopefully you've scheduled some time for tomorrow to complete the next day's lessons. But for now, it's good night from me.